What is the worst piece of advice anybody has ever given to you? You can call us, let us know at 800-682-1075. We do have a woman's 106-year-old grandmother who just, she stopped giving her granddaughter advice because I guess she wasn't taking it. And now she just judges, just pa- just openly judges <laughs> everything that her granddaughter does in a day-to-day basis. I'm 38. and never been there. <laughs> really, Nana? <laughs> never been married. Never been married. Never been married. 38 years old, and never been married. No children or nothing. You sure have missed a lot of life. <laughs> Why do I have to get married and have kids to have a good life? You do have no good life. I do. You don't go nowhere. I do. I just got back from a trip. By yourself, no man. <laughs> <laughs> I love this lady. Uh-huh. She's quick. She's Very quick. Uh-huh. I don't have a man. You ain't nothing. Really? I'm not nothing without a man, huh? I had a husband, tell you that, huh? I still have sex. I know you do, but that's not right. That's dirty. <laughs> Sleeping around like a... <laughs> One, person. One person. Sleeping around like a... <laughs> <laughs> this... What? This woman is amazing. Yeah. Who is she? <laughs> she's someone's years old. grandma. Uh, she's quick. Yeah, yeah, she is. You ain't nothing without a man. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Sleeping around like a, you know what? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, if you have some bad advice that anyone's given you, she's, wow. this lady's obviously done. Obviously, she's giving her advice. Get married, have kids. Yes. She's not listening Mm-mm. to it. Mm-hmm. 800-682-1075. Squid? Um, yeah, when I was in college, my advisor uh, said that you can make a lot of money in radio. And so I went, I went and decided to go into radio. And Are you know, kidding? What a moron. It's a terrible advisor. Yeah, yeah. He was a little older, yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. He, he got good intentions, I believe. Yeah. That's where I think talking to people who are actually doing it will be very, like, that's probably that's, more beneficial for you. That's a good advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. a good advice. That's why Squid don't listen to Jason anymore. Squid's been burnt by an advisor now. He's not going to listen to him now about financial oh, stuff. Yeah, that's true. I've been listening to Jason, though. I've bought the value pack of Doritos instead of buying them from the snack machine. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Pack, yeah. That just made Jason yeah. so happy. Man. Like, but, did no, you? But, but I told you that the other day, Jason. You were like, well, were they on sale? And I was like, I didn't check that. And then you were oh. disappointed. Well, well yes. yes. Well, it has, has to, uh, has to baby be on sale. Steps, it's baby steps, though. It's baby steps. Oh, yeah. In the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if they were or not. You have to. Sure. You, you're, you're paying $5 probably more for that. And yeah. that $5 could have went into a mutual fund, but that's a good story. But the $5 probably is being saved compared to downstairs yes, at the but thing. Yes, the additional $5 could have been put every time he does it could have made him yeah. $5,000 by the time he turns 50 he'll, or 40, whatever. He'll eventually get it. But, but he, he did he, buy he a, a, a place. Yes. yes. He didn't, I didn't yeah. approve it, but he did oh, buy yeah, a place. Oh, yeah, yeah. He didn't tell any of us, which is probably the right thing to do. Probably, mm. but just uh, very, very uh, weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just one day, here I am with a brand new condo. Right. Okay. Oh, and we had talked, we, uh, he had brought it up like a year ago. Mm-hmm. He showed us one place, and he's like, oh, it didn't work out, and then that was it. Yeah. So he's he has a lot of secrets. And also something yeah. that we actively talk about every almost every day on the show is how you what? live with your mother. It's part of your identity yeah. for who you are on the show. And then you just doesn't even occur to you I to think mention. You're worried like, about the jinx. Well, part that of that, what? part yeah. of that, and like Matt said, Lil Wayne, real G's move in silence like lasagna. No, but you're not Lil Wayne. Yeah. And then, and yeah, then, I too, I wanted to, eventually, I was hoping like one day y'all would like roast me for living with uh, my mom, and then I could just hit y'all with the right hook and be like, <laughs> I got a condo, I don't live with her no more. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. yeah. Well, no, and it actually takes discipline, because when I, I'm excited about something, I want to tell people, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. then... It, I don't believe in jinxing it, but it does. When something does fall through, you're like, "Dang, I shouldn't have told anybody." Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess yeah. so. Matt, guess. what's some bad advice somebody gave you? I would say ninety percent of my family tried to get me to not go to college where I went to college. Why? Oh. How come? Yeah, Why? they felt like it was too close to home. You know, it was like ten minutes down the road. Mm-hmm. They felt like I should have gone away. Okay. To kind of get away from everything, but it, it wasn't. I didn't feel like it was the right choice for me at the time, primarily because my girlfriend was still in school oh. and I wanted to be near her. Oh, that's that's what they were doing. Yeah. Though. They knew yeah. that was a trap. Mm-hmm. They, they knew that was the primary reason like, I even looked at this school. But then, you know, once they went to HPU, they fell in love with the campus. Sure. So they got it eventually. But then, of course, you know, halfway through freshman year, she broke up with me and I'm like, well, damn. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to be here. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. That's should have gone to California. That's yeah. some good advice. Is like, don't go to college based on where your boyfriend or girlfriend's going. No. That is yeah. true. That's yeah. great advice. Yeah. I don't think that's bad advice, Matt. I don't think it is either, but I look at what I have. I, I would have never, I wouldn't be working here. Well, you don't I'm, have to have college to be here. No, no you no, don't. I, I know you that. don't have to have like a, like you barely have to be alive to yeah. work here. But he's yeah. a professor now. Yes. Right. And I would not have gone to graduate school had I not gone there. Like, none of that, no, nowhere that I'm currently at. 
would be where I am had I gone away to school because I don't know that I would have moved back or even pursued the same kind mm-hmm. of career path. Mm-hmm. So yeah, okay. where I am now is specifically because I went to school there, but I understand at the time it was probably great advice, but it's the best advice that I didn't follow that has played <laughs> nice. out. Okay. Best. I can see that. Yeah. I can see it. I have two. One is people are like, oh, you should get married. <laughs> Horrible advice. <laughs> <laughs> you should try it again. Really bad advice. Who said you should <laughs> try it again? Who said, that? Who said try it again? <laughs> uh, nobody. The voice in his head. <laughs> it's it's like, yeah. it can't, this can't, uh, lightning can't strike. Tw- oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh. His right second in, wife convinced him. Right in, right in my face, yeah. the lightning. Uh, no, but I remember being in uh, high school and like your su- first like summer job and one of my friends was like, we should work at Emerald Point. And it's nothing against Emerald Point, Wet n' Wild, the water park. But I was, we all followed his lead for some reason because he did research. Uh-huh. He was like, oh, yeah, we can work. And we'll be supervisors over area. And you have like a, this appeal to 16-year-olds. Mm-hmm. You have like a walkie-talkie. And you kind of you're, you're, you tell people what to do in your area. And we're like, all right. Mm-hmm. And they're like, and there'll be girls there. like, cool. <laughs> yeah. And you can yeah. go to the water park and tell me what I want for free, which is true. Okay. Then we get there. And we get hired on. We're all groundskeepers, which is what he. There's. You're not a supervisor over anything. Uh huh. You're a supervisor over a dustpan and a broom. <laughs> yeah. And you're wearing umbro type shorts. Uh huh. A fanny pack, which definitely wasn't in style then, and then like a hat that like didn't fit. And then for 12 hours a day, you swept up people's junk. And then if if a baby <laughs> like had a diaper that fell on the ground, you went and cleaned it up. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it was not for me. Then my other people who didn't, other friends who did not listen to this one friend. They're like lifeguards, and they were like the celebrities. Yes, they oh, are at the water park. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and they wouldn't even talk to us, and they were our friends. <laughs> <laughs> like, when we pulled up in the morning, they're like, "Hey guys!" And, we, and as soon as we walked through those gates, we did not exist. Wow! Yeah. They were the red shorts. We're the blue shorts. Oh. Don't talk to the blue shorts. And I didn't want people to talk to me either. I was like embarrassed the whole time I worked there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk to me. Then I yeah. luckily tore my ACL. <laughs> luckily, <laughs> and they had me uh, working the front gate, and I love that part of it. Because well, oh, were really? you in air conditioning? Yeah. Well, they had like fans, but you just sat there. They're in the shade, yeah. and like you kind of got to see what people were bringing in. Yeah, I'm kind of nosy, well, That you know? seems like it would be a better job just to work the gate. Yeah, ticket yeah. taker. I love that. Yeah. That was great. And then I had two friends that came on later that they used to have a basketball uh, game. Mm-hmm. That's all they did all day was let people shoot basketball, and they cool. made more than the people that were sweeping up the junk. Ugh. So it was yeah. horrible advice not to not not working at Emerald Point, but what to what to choose as our job while working there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And was it? Do you think he did it because he just wanted to have y'all on his team? No, he never worked there. He didn't know. He, did, uh, he, yeah. he thought, he, I don't know, based on what, there's not one thing that says you're a supervisor of anything. And why would you be? You're 16. <laughs> when you're 16, no. you're stupid. You're like, yes, they don't know me, and I'm going to work here this summer, and they're going to just give me a whole area to be in charge of? Uh-huh. No. Yeah, you had a area that you swept up, but you had, no, you had no authority over anybody. And I think that when you're 16, when somebody says anything to you with authority, you're just like, oh, I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> you <know>? yeah. 100%. <laughs> Must be true. Yeah. I don't really have any advice that because I don't take anybody's advice no, you ever. Don't. <laughs> it's in one ear, out the other. I'm gonna do what I want. Yeah, and I always have. I don't know. It's like I I will listen, but halfway. Right. I don't know. I, there hasn't been anything bad or or misleading. I don't think that anybody's ever given. Mm. So who well, knows? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, uh, if anything, I probably wish I did take some of the oh good advice. Gosh. Yeah. That was yeah. given because it would, it would be a much better situation. I think when I was 18, mm-hmm. I took a tour to work, and I did work there briefly, at UPS. Uh-huh. And there was an old-timer that was doing the tour, and he's getting ready to retire. And he says, working here is hard at first, but they have matching benefits and matching 401k. He said, max out. I'm like 18. He said, max out your 401k immediately, yeah. no matter Thank what. You. Why yeah. are we giving Jared crap for this? What? I've what? been trying to say this. As soon as I say 401k, I get slammed. Oh, no, well, you say the, mutual fund. Yeah, like, same yeah. thing. You're like, every $2, and you know, like, you can, we can point out things that you waste money on. Like, it could have been a mutual fund. Mm-hmm. We all do it. I'm just saying, I've never said it's bad advice. It's boring Plus, advice. Plus, he was how old? 18? I was 18. 18. I, 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 like, I was like, 401 what? Yeah. But 401k is a mutual fund, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I was 18, and he was right. I mean, I wish I would listen to that immediately. And let mm-hmm. me tell you something about that. Uh, recently, UPS drivers are making bank. Now, yeah. now a lot of them are going to get mad that I just said that, because maybe not all of them. But I heard that when they went on a strike and they, ca- they came back, some of the drivers... And I don't know if that's around here, but some of the drivers are definitely making well over six figures. Yeah. Wow. Goodness. Well, when, we, when I was working there and I was 18, I was loading the trucks. Oh, my God. Manual, manual labor. Oh, no not, joke. I'm surprised you're not in shape. 
He was, I was 18. Then. I, I know, but th- that lifestyle, you were going that I did way. it for a month and I quit. And he knows, <laughs> yeah. he knows how hard it was. Yeah. And then I was 18. I was in great shape, but I was like, I, I'm not doing this. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. About, oh, oh yeah, yeah. They said like the average person had to work at UPS for 12 years to become a driver. Oh. You're not, you can't, you don't apply to be a driver. I mean, maybe there's instances now where you have a lot of. They said the average person that becomes a driver at UPS has had to work there for at least twelve years. Yeah, Man. I don't. I think that th- what happened was when um, all the Amazon stuff mm-hmm. and all the uh, online ordering mm-hmm. kicked in, it, it put a huge demand for drivers. Mm-hmm. Yes. So back then there wasn't as d- much as of a demand. Now there's a demand to get drivers, Amazon, UPS, because we're ordering stuff nonstop. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Every. I mean, I. Uh, I know we talk about Jason's home, how there's a lot of Amazon packages, but we also get a lot. I mean, maybe not in huge quantity, but at least like three or four times a week. And then, I mean, that's that's a lot. Three or four times a week for different things. I'm thinking three or four times a day. I know. (laughs) (laughs) That could be in a mutual fund. (laughs) Could be, be, exactly. Get Carol on the phone. They're working hard. I mean, they they work very long hours, especially for the time that's coming up. Yeah, and they, from what I understand is... uh, they give them so much that they they're you ever notice how they're constantly running? Yes. It seems like yeah. they're running. Mm-hmm. They the are time. running. Because they if they get it done quicker, they get it's a, a quicker day for them, but they give them so much it's never a mm-hmm. quicker day. It's a very long day. And if they don't do that, they're gonna be there for hours and hours and hours and hours. So it is definitely grueling. It is definitely intense. I'm hearing a lot of them don't even stop to go to the bathroom. They actually I'm just saying, not not any particular company, but it's mm-hmm. been seen where some of them are going in bottles in the truck because they just don't have time to stop. Mm-hmm. Basically, that's why you should leave some snacks out for your snacks and stuff during the holidays. How especially? do they have lunch? I don't know. I don't know. Well, but that's for, why for Katie, mail too. Katie, remember she had that commode in her front yard. I did. The UPS yeah, it was in the backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. For privacy, you're well, right. They had to. That was my way of getting them to deliver the packages out back. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying, you come up here, potty. use the toilet. I'll give you a pack of crackers. Well, I will say this: one of my friends who was in radio. Uh, got let go. This is Virginia Beach, and he took an Amazon uh, job as a driver. Yeah, he lost like fifty pounds. Oh gosh, and mm, he didn't really? change anything. Yeah, it's yeah. just that much. Oh wow. Yeah. So Jared, <laughs> there's hope. I've lost thirty three pounds recently. That's true. And so I'm good. The answer is he ain't doing that. I ain't no. doing that. <laughs> He's not taking your advice. I mean, so. I know you, want, you want me to not be here, but <laughs> no, I get saying, that part. He's not I'm just taking. Saying it. worst came to worst, it's not the end of the world. You've been saying that more recently, and he I don't really, like it. You really no, have. No, I'm not. Uh-huh. I really don't I've like it. I've said that my whole life. <laughs> yeah, that, that is also true. <laughs> my whole life, it's always the the worst is coming. Well, we did mm-hmm. this thing, uh, uh, an event for a trucking company, Best Driving School. Oh, yeah. In Kernersville. Mm-hmm. Me, Matt, and Squid. It was amazing to have three of us at the same place. Yeah, I, be- I believe it. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you can make some really good money. Yes. Matt was yes. saying he has friends oh, yeah. that even just drive locally mm-hmm. that make oh, a yeah. shocking amount of money. I did. Yeah, it's what, crazy. The, um, it wasn't the grand opening, but it was a hiring event for FedEx out yeah. in Kernersville. And that was the day that I got to sign a young man's chest. Oh. Do you remember? It was yes. yeah. 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 In my mind ecstatic. forever. Yeah, he was. But yeah. you were there. I forgot. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. I took, I took a picture, I'm you pretty did. sure. Yeah, while, while you were signing his his, his Squid, are you checking Instagram while you're talking to Katie? I uh, no, I'm thinking our AML Blake that was there. He was saying, oh, I was yeah, looking yeah, for his name. Yeah. Oh. Shout out our boy Blake. He was a maybe Huge one of the biggest AML. AML so. Was he? I mean, he knew everything about everybody and was, he was so excited to see us. Like, I felt like an imposter. Well, it, mm-hmm. it, made, it made me like it rejuvenated. I mean, I, like I felt excited about life talking to him. He was so positive. And then you yeah. come back and Jason's like, you know, you should work for Amazon to have <laughs> like, a second uh, backup. Like, just in case yeah. you get fired. <laughs> yeah. Thank no, you. I'm, well, well, well but anyway. Would you do that, Jason? Would you? When you get fired? Well, I will tell you this. <laughs> if. <laughs> if. if. I will tell you this. I have, the one thing is I am, I can be, have that pessimistic outlook of, because I'm always trying to be prepared, right? Mm-hmm. And, but I will say whatever I'm kind of in, I try to make the best of it. Yes. That's the one mm-hmm. thing I do when I if I was working at I'm sorry, but if I was doing the cleanup at Wet and Wild, I would clean the hell out of that and be much better than you are. That's my attitude. Oh, you make it a competition. Yeah. Yes, I One hundred percent. Well, because your other option is being miserable all day. Yes. So, and sometimes I see pe- workers. Exactly. Yeah. I see workers are so miserable at that, their job. I'm thinking you should either get a new one or you're so much effort to be miserable. That's draining. Change it mm-hmm. to the other way. And at least it's more positive. It might not be the best situation, but at least it's more positive. Yeah. No, I feel the same way. Except I mean, when I cleaned the dormitory at the college, when I had that job, that was you not. You quit after yeah. like yeah. half that of the shift. That's the only job I ever quit. Yeah. And you yeah. like throw it in like the wrong garbage can or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> and, he, and he just left it. He just left the shift. You're right. You're right. It happens. It happens.